The Millennium Project seeks married couples to participate in a 30-day research study. Payment, $50,000. We don't even know what this is. Well, I can assure you, it was a group of romantics who, I must confess, are a little obsessed with love. I hope you all enjoy your stay here. But what got me started in filmmaking is when I was a kid, I used to love watching movies because it's such a form of like escapism. So I feel like, uh, you know, everyday life is pretty mundane. But like if you come home and you watch a movie, you're in this whole new world. And I, I loved watching movies as a kid and uh, carried on watching movies and became more interested with uh, making them and how they were made. And I especially love horror films, so I became obsessed with like how um, the special effects are done and I created my own horror company to do uh, short films to start out um, to start building on my uh, filmmaking skills so I could learn how to make them uh, from behind the scenes and also work on my acting skills. Uh, so that's pretty much um, what got me into it, just the love of film. To me, um, telling a story in uh, feature form is, is so different than telling a story in short form because um, with short form stories you have to kind of get to the point real quick and round it up and there's not as much room for development. But with a feature film, like you can really explore ideas and characters um, and this, you learn so much more about them and you can become so much more attached to the characters and, um, and the story and just learn more in general because it's just a little bit more time to explore um, the ideas that you're trying to create in a story. And I love that um, when I played Eve because it was the first time I got to play a character uh, where I was the lead for a long time and I I started like feeling more stuff like um, naturally as Eve instead of like really planning it out like in a short film it's normally pretty basic it's like this is this is your character this is who you are this is what we're trying to get across and we have to do it in under 10 minutes um but in the feature film you're like oh think about this backstory and think about why she's like this and why they do this and I, it's just so much more interesting and i think by the end of a feature film you you're so much more invested in the story because you just have longer with it and longer to understand it when you do a film, you plan and plan and plan to do things and then on the day things can just change and you might have to make those decisions um, that can change how the film, like stylistically how it's shot or how um, the scene is, you know, acted um, because you have to either rush or you have more time. Um, and especially with horror, sometimes you can you think that something will look good and then you do it and you're like, ah, oh, I'm not really feeling this and you can always just switch that up on set as long as the team's call cool for it and there's enough time you can just say can we try this if we have time and sometimes the can we try this shot is much better than the shots that you planned um, and I think that's what's cool when you're directing is you can make them decisions you can be like I'm just not feeling this in any part of the in any department so if you're like i'm not just i'm just not feeling this acting can we take it like a different in a different direction i'm not feeling this angle i'm not feeling this lighting like um so you do have to be just literally ready to change everything up on the day uh your crew would hate you but uh it's whatever's best for the film is <laughs> what's best for the film Me and Phil um, both wanted to make a film together and Philip was um, ready to make a feature film and he wrote The Honeymoon Phase and he wrote it with me in mind so I was just like super lucky as an actor uh, to be married to the director who pretty much wrote this whole role for me. Um, like even things like why I was British was wrote into the film um, which is just super awesome for me. Uh, so I also got a lot of time to kind of understand the character because I saw all the drafts so I saw every version of Eve Eve right up until the end and it's not like you know normal where you get the script two weeks before and it's like work it out you know <laughs> find the character like I had a lot of time to really sit down with Eve as a character and um, decide how I wanted to play her and um, yeah so I had, it, I had it pretty pretty good on this this film as an actor.
emotionally, any role that you do, it's it's got to have a bit of yourself in it, um, especially when you are um, doing roles that are emotionally demanding. To get there, you have to kind of not not in a method way where you're like I, you know, have to become that character. But even even if you're playing a villain or someone who you are nothing like as a person, you have to find why they think they are right and understand it and like really embody that to play a character well um, and with uh, Eve you know it's, it's pretty traumatic for her she uh, she it is an emotional role because everything kind of goes wrong and she's the victim and um, you know things like understanding certain emotions like betrayal and um, Betrayal's a massive one. Like I, of course, I have to think about when I felt betrayed as Chloe, and then you put that into Eve, and yeah, it's just about like putting yourself into someone else, and I think that they're the best. Uh, that gives the best performance because then you really feel for that character. And when Philip was cast in the honeymoon phase, um, he it was important to him that the the actor who played Tom was married because then they would understand what it's like to be married in real life because it it's hard to play and you can but it, it's hard to play um, things you don't know and, and obviously you can and that's the job of an actor but like if you don't understand love that's a hard one to play like I you know when I was younger I would play characters that were in love and you think you know what love is and then like you are actually in love and you're like oh this is totally different to how I played it when I was younger um, now I know how it actually is um, so I think it you know if you experience certain emotions it's much easier to act them because you can remember exactly how you felt and just bring it and put it into a character I think when you um, when you watch a film and you expect what is going to happen, sometimes people want that. Like if you go to see Jumanji, you want the, you want them to start the game. You want it to be like pretty action packed, and then you want them to win the game. And then sometimes, you know, you watch a film where you you kind of expect the general narrative, and you don't get that, and it's upsetting because you're like, oh, this isn't what I wanted when I started watching the film. But sometimes you can watch a film that takes you on a journey that you don't think that you're going to go down and you're like, oh, this is actually better or if it's not better, it's more interesting. You're like, oh, because I wasn't expecting this and it keeps you on the edge of your seat, As especially during horror films. I love that because um, you, you think you're going to watch like, you know, a pretty standard horror film where it's like, you know, there's a killer. You know, some of them get killed and then you have the final girl and then that's the end. Um, and then sometimes when it flips that, you're like, wow this is so like where's this going and, it, and it's exciting and and I love that and it is important that you um, you go on the film the film's journey and not your own expectations this the story uh, it is about you know even and she is the victim in this and she is crying out for help and just can't get it because everyone's kind of like against her and they're all in on the experiment and it's the story that you want to see is where the the victim you know struggles their way, way out but they get out in the end and we you know flip that and they don't win in the end and that's you know unfortunately how it happens sometimes and that is why it's so devastating when you watch the end of the film um, because you expect everything to kind of like wrap up in a nice like happy ending I do think when you watch a film, um, you take something new from a film once you've done it, whether you're in front or behind the camera, you learn something from the character that you've created as an actor. Uh, maybe it's not something that you would do as yourself, but as an actor, you're like, oh, I, I learned the moral of their story just by playing them. And when you watch it as an audience, you learn from watching them. And then as a filmmaker, um, I feel like it's mostly technical stuff that you you learn and um, but you're, you're still experiencing the story as a filmmaker and you're still like um, you're still you're the one who's in control of telling it so you're the kind of the person who's in in control of how people experience the story um, so yeah I, th I think that you do 
you do learn something new each time and it is different. But I think that when you edit a film, it's different to how it was, um, how you intended it to be when you wrote it. And it's the same when you film it. Sometimes you have to, because with filmmaking, you have to make decisions on the ball sometimes. So, you know, things change. Um, but it's always heartbreaking. Well, not heartbreaking for me when someone misinterprets your film <laughs> and you're like, oh, you know, this is how I want you to feel at this moment. And then they don't feel like that. And you're like, oh my God, I failed. Like, this isn't what I wanted. But sometimes they take away something completely different or they take away a different meaning from something in a good way and that they'll, um, that'll be something they learn from the film, you know? Uh, but yeah, when, whenever you send your film out to like film festivals or you put it online, it's always just like, oh, this is, you know, is it going to read how I want it to read? Um, is it what I thought it was going to be? Sometimes it's even better because people, and with the honeymoon phase for Phil, it's been great because people have had all these different ideas. They're like, this is what I think's happening from the trailer and this is what I think's going on. And Phil's like, that's not what's going on, but it's exciting that they, they think that that could be where it is. Like they're interested enough to have these theories. Um, so it's exciting uh, as a filmmaker just to know that it might be interpreted differently, but sometimes it's not, it's not a bad thing. Like it's just, everyone has a different view. Everyone has a different opinion and they're going to take it how they take it. It's, it's art. So, um, it's, it's completely, um, opinionated.